It is my absolute honor today to rise in support of Bill 369 and also my honor to recognize that we are gathering today on the unceded territories of the Algonquin peoples. This bill has been tabled by my colleague, the Member of Parliament for Desnethe, Mississippi, Churchill River. And I wish here to share that I witnessed how powerful it was for her to finally deliver her first speech on another bill in her Dene language, a language shared by many in her riding and across our northern communities. Having traveled with her in her northern Saskatchewan riding last summer, I can attest to how important it is that she can now finally speak in this place in one of the Indigenous languages spoken by her constituents back home, and what a joy it was to experience her in her community with her fellow community members speaking their Indigenous languages. The intention of this bill is to create a statutory holiday on September the 30th each year, starting this year. And this delivers on at least one of the calls for action, number 80 issued by the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. The title of the report, Honoring the Truth, Reconciling for the Future, conveys the depth of the tragedy and the need for action. It may be noted that the Prime Minister, early in his mandate, publicly committed to deliver on all 94 of the calls for action, and so we need to all be grateful here that my colleague has brought forward the opportunity to deliver on at least one of them. And I want to read, Mr. Speaker, what um, the call for action number 80 says. In quotes, we call upon the federal government in collaboration with Aboriginal peoples to establish as a statutory holiday a national day for truth and reconciliation to honor survivors, their families and communities, and to ensure that the public commemoration of the history and legacy of residential schools remains a vital component of the reconciliation process. It's my understanding, and it's my hope, that there is now multiple party support by members in this place for this bill. I noted that my colleague, in speaking yesterday to her bill, reminded us that we are all responsible for becoming actively engaged in reconciliation. The intent of the bill is therefore twofold, to recognize the continuing need for support, for healing, for survivors of the residential school system, and in recognition of the continued impacts down through generations, and to recognize it as a cultural genocide. Secondly, to directly inform and engage Canadians in the residential school system and harm that they caused. I shouldn't say engage them in the residential school system, engage them in the knowledge of the harms caused by the residential school system. I wish to honor the dedication of the commissioners, Justice Marie Sinclair, Chief Wilton Littlechild and Dr. Marie Wilson in undertaking the momentous process of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. It's important to honor the many residential school survivors and their families who came forward to share their experiences. The report conveys the principle that reconciliation is a relationship and I would like to share what the report says. In quotes, for many survivors and their families, this commitment is foremost about healing themselves, their communities and nations in ways that revitalize individuals as well as indigenous cultures, language, spirituality, laws and government systems. For governments, building a respectful relationship involves dismantling a centuries old political and bureaucratic culture in which all too often policies and programs are still based on failed notions of assimilation. And my honorable colleague spoke to this when she spoke to this bill previously, and we're very close to the place where the residential school was unfortunately created. They also add that schools must teach, must teach history in ways that foster mutual respect, empathy, and engagement. All Canadian children and youth deserve to know Canada's honest history, including what happened in the residential schools, and to appreciate the rich history and knowledge of Indigenous nations, who continue to make such a strong contribution to Canada, including our very name and collective identity as a country. For Canadians from all walks of life, reconciliation offers a new way of living together. Canada already celebrates our First Nations, Métis and Inuit cultures and languages every year, June 21st, at National Indigenous Peoples Day. 
and that's during the summer solstice. And my understanding is initially my colleague had proposed that that be the day. But she has very graciously agreed to change her bill so that in fact we are going to have a day of celebration in June during the solstice and then we will have a day of recognition, recognition and learning at the end of September of each year. I've had the delight of attending many of the events on June 21st in my riding and joining in the round dances, attempting a jig, and who can resist another Bannock burger? It's wonderful to see all the school children joining in in those activities. The day proposed by Bill 369 will offer a more solemn day, however, to leave to learn about the sufferings of those who were torn from their families, forced to travel far from their, their families, and shipped off, stripped of their language, beliefs, and cultures for far too many for their entire childhoods. As was pointed out by my colleague, it will be necessary that this government commit well in advance of September 20th this year the necessary funds to ensure that the intents are achieved and that there are clear plans for the day. And it is absolutely important that this be in direct consultation with the First Nation, Métis and Inuit peoples, and particularly in the communities where the activities will occur, which I hope happen in every community across this country. The intention is to honour the suffering and to provide opportunity for teachings. My colleague has asked that this day also be recognised as a time for reconciliation for those children torn from their language and culture during the 60s scoop and those from the day in boarding schools not yet recognized. I have been inspired by the initiative of many Indigenous people to engage us in the process of reconciliation. Two of my dear friends, the children of my friend Louis Cardinal, Hunter and Jacqueline Cardinal, have founded the Edmonton Company Neheyawin, through which they are reaching out through theatre, through the arts, and through roundtables to teach people about the treaties a very important action that has not been done across this country, so important to my province, where we are the land of the historic treaties, and there have been constant calls by the First Nation leaders for recognition of those treaties. As Jacqueline has shared, she wants people to move past feelings of guilt from past wrongs and to focus on a better future. She wants people to get past the guilt many feel for the past and look forward to making things better. She hopes that the roundtables will be based on the Cree word tatwa, which means there is room for you, welcome. So I'm very grateful too that the famous Edmonton Fringe Theatre Festival last year featured and honoured our Indigenous culture and uh, inc incorporated many, many ceremonies to on honour uh, our First Nations meeting in with throughout the festival. So thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. I am very grateful to my colleague and I wish to thank her.